So when I'm here over in the US, I always like to show you cars or experience the cars for myself, which are A, not super expensive, and B, also rather a little bit specific to the market and very successful here. One of those is a Nissan Sentra, which is here in the all new platform, actually, the new 2020 model. So let's dig deeper in exterior, interior, and also different trims we have here on location. Let's go. So the Sentra is now a little bit wider and also a little bit flatter, so it looks sportier, especially here in the so-called SR trim. And then there's daytime running light together with new LED headlights. You know, that looks quite fresh and I said quite sporty, especially in here with the black accentuations with this new stronger V-form grille here and also with those honeycomb structures. Pretty spectacular in this golden orange color. We call it that way maybe. Then also with a contrasting roof you can get there. Also black mirror caps. And those are 18 inch wheels. So also quite big for this car. And they make together this sporty look in this SR trim. What else is interesting technology wise. There's now an independent rear suspension. That's supposed to increase the comfort while driving. We're really looking forward to drive that car one day. Also on the US roads. Classic sedan shape in the rear. But here then with an additional wing, SR lettering right there and a small honeycomb structure styling right here. Before we go to this actually quite nice exhaust here. It's not too big engine, but it looks quite powerful already from rear end with a modern signature here for the lights. Engine choice actually quite easy with this car. We're not allowed to open the hood here today, but I can tell you more about the engine. So they go from a 1.8 liter up to a 2 liter engine now, petrol engine, so a little bit more displacement, you know, there's no replacement for displacement, and even in environmental sense, downsizing doesn't always make sense, rather a little bit more displacement, but maybe less horsepower tune, for example, but in this case also more horsepower, now at 150 horsepower, and you drive with an automatic transmission, which will be a CVT. And now to a different color and to a different trim, the SV, let's say less sporty, but more upmarket trim, of course, always how you define that. This one has also the so-called premium package. But what's also interesting, they also upgrade the assistance system. So this Nissan 360 safety shield comes from standard equipment now. That means the autonomous emergency brake for the front is standard. The blind spot monitor here, side mirrors, is also standard. Also the rear cross traffic alert, so you know the car automatically stops when you miss something when going reverse. Also standard rear view camera, I mean has to be standard at least in the US anyway because that's mandatory. But definitely good standard equipment also with a normal cruise control. Optionally then the adaptive cruise control and also optional the 360 degree around camera view. So those are two assistance systems options you can get. But the most stuff you already get from base equipment. And I think that's a pretty fair choice. And one more rear three quarter perspective right there in the different color. Which one do you actually prefer from those two cars we have here on location today? Let's take a look at the interior. Door closing sound first. Yeah, well, I mean, we've heard more solid ones, so to say. But then they upgrade the materials here, soft at the inside of the door. This is then a leatherette cover here as well, pretty soft also for the armrest. Where the window levers here, they are pretty cheap, so maybe should exchange that at some point. Then you also have some contrast stitches here at the dashboard. This is also a little bit soft touch, so to say. This is the new Nissan steering wheel design from the modern car lineup. They also introduced it with some recent facelifts and so on. And then those seats, they're also a little bit sporty, also with then, you know, the, those orange contrast stitches. And I was told earlier by a product manager that those ones would be the leatherette seats here in the SR trim. And, and indeed, it's really amazing. This one here is such a high-grade leatherette, so it feels very very soft just from the surface no one could tell the difference if it's now like you know animal based or not so a high grade one 
really premium style. I can just recommend it. So, um, and again, if you wouldn't know it, I really had to check twice that they are really, you know, uh, <laughs> telling me the truth. So this is also one of the examples that you can get a really cool, sustainable and animal-friendly high-grade leatherettes. And you can also get with, you know, with a basic fabric trim that's also possible for the animal-free option. So then electric seat control here, manual for the steering column. And I mean, this is not a super expensive car, therefore you, you know, you also see and feel some things which are, let's say, rather basic, but they definitely stepped up the game here already. And seating position is actually quite comfy. It's a normal low sedan seating position. I'm one means 86 or six foot one. And together with the panoramic roof being here, there's still some headroom left, so no problem. And you know, you actually can feel quite decent in here, quite cozy. And we'll soon now take a look at the whole cockpit perspective. Interior overview, quite stylish. You have this V form here also in the interior, then some soft touch and then round turbine vents style. So this creates a little bit sporty atmosphere here. The climate unit here with a nice clicking sound. So that's also nice from the build quality. And also, you know, some knurling around that. that I really like that. It's easy to control while driving. Like to have it straightforward. Also, heated steering wheel is available. So you get this new 7-inch touchscreen. Here you can see with a cable connection for the CarPlay. And with Auto is also possible if you are, you know, going with that. Soon a little bit more details to the screen. And you can always black it out here or um, have this like day and night or auto mode. That's also a nice function to have. Maybe a little bit brighter now, helps you a little bit more. Then the automatic shifting in the lower part, start stop action, the button and USB-C and USB-A device next to each other. So you can actually pick which one you prefer at the moment. Yeah, those cup holes are pretty big, but they're not adaptive. So they have to be really big that they don't fly around right here. And again, in perspective here at this compact steering wheel, you know, with a good handle, also with a flat bottom. So, yeah, a lot of sporty elements we find here, especially then, again, in this SR trim. So, see here, the CarPlay integration is quite well done. Goes all the way all over the screen, and then you can actually not go from here back to the Nissan menu. So, I wonder about that. So, you have to use the hotkey right there, and then you're back there. But, well, I mean... Usually, with this kind of setup, you use the CarPlay or the Android Auto, and that's it. That should all be the thing you should go for. Oh, now we're <laughs> the car's being turned. There's also a camera button right there. Um, front camera is not active at the moment. You can see here there will be this surround view, but the resolution of the cameras here they should actually be a little bit better. But the main thing about this infotainment system will be that you use the CarPlay. You still have a manual volume knob here. And now to the rear seats, here we go. And when I'm driving as a tall driver, I exactly fit behind the seat. Just put a hand in front of my legs and headroom wise, although it looks quite sporty from the exterior, it works quite well. So I can also put a hand over my head. So it directly works for four tall adults. And it's also, you know, quite comfortable in here. So can't complain about that. Pretty no standard, you know, like for, you know, the size of a, of a sedan. In the middle part, it's actually also quite soft right there. This one here, by the way, has the premium package. Then, well, yeah, it would work for short ways, but I do hit um, the ceiling then, and it's also quite stiff here. So better sit on the outside. Isofix on the outside, of course. And then there's one USB-A charger here in the middle. And this middle part here, you can also flip down to have some cup holders then for the rear. So, what about the trunk area? Yeah, I mean, this sounds a little bit weird when you open the trunk, a little bit loose also. And you see here, it's actually quite wide, but then there's a loading sill and well, hard to see here, but actually you have some decent space because not too much space is being wasted actually. And you know, I can reach in there as well. And then underneath, there's also a spare tire. And we can also go around and flip the seat. Here we go, we have to go around for that. Here we go. And well, there's this one step here. Um, this might be a disadvantage. So, but you can see for loading things through. Well, now the other interior trim, the SV. What I found quite nice is that we have a bright color here that looks quite fancy. Also with the seats, so interesting color choice. However, those ones are in the premium package here with the SV are the animal skin seats. So 
it's in a contrast then to the other, but you see in the SR you also have the other choice. But color-wise, I think it's also interesting to have this, you know, brighter contrast than here in the interior. And now to a conclusion for the day with the Nissan Sentra in this new platform generation. Very interesting because, I mean, it's a normal, let's say, everyday driving sedan and it's not too expensive. That's also what makes it so interesting because now with this new style, especially in the SR trim, makes it already look pretty attractive and pretty sporty. Also, again, with, you know, with the daytime running light there in the front. Interesting also from the interior because we see a high-grade leatherette here. So you can combine, you know, if you want a slick luxury surface, but still being animal friendly. Also a good example for that. Then the infotainment system upgrades and so on. And still some decent space also on the interior thing. It's good package and also fair that they actually put all the base assistance systems just from sand equipment that's i think also good for the customer so nice price performance uh, ratio you can still expect with this vehicle i mean here and there there could be some you know a little bit better interior build quality or when you open and close the rear doors it sounds a little bit cheap and so on but then you have to think about okay you know always think about the price and then i think you can also live with one or two things but definitely stepped up the game here with the new 2020 model Looking forward to your feedback, and I really enjoyed doing this one here um, here today for your know, US spec car. You know, pretty popular here also in the US market, and looking forward to do more of those also. And really would love to drive those ones here also on the streets of LA.